Hi, it's Dwyer, GamblersAdvisory.com for premium picks, DwyerSportsBetting.com on Roku, Dwyer Boxing News. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Julio Cesar Chavez Jr., in my opinion, one of the harder punchers in the sport. In my opinion, one of the better inside fighters, especially inside to the body in the sport, is actually returning to the ring against Texan Brian Bera. Now, I don't want you to consider this to be a boxing prediction video, right? What I'm actually trying to do here is to beat the casino. It's to come up with plays that can take advantage of undervalued situations, right? Based on fight styles and circumstance. Let's talk about the circumstances for this fight. Things that you need to look at. The first is weight. Chavez Jr. was big for a middleweight, but understand this fight is supposed to take place at 168 pounds. Different world entirely. Right now, Brian Vera, who is not a puncher, who has a career knockout ratio of less than 50%, has actually fought at 168 pounds in the past. He knocked out Sebastian Demers in 2008. Right? You're talking about a guy who has been there and done that. Not only that, he's shown more power at 168 than he has at 160. Let me say this too. Let's talk about the level of fitness. Let's get off the grid here. In my opinion, Chavez Jr. hasn't been in shape for years. Right? I consider a fighter to be in shape when that guy is able to make weight. When that guy's weight is not yo-yoing between the day before the weigh-in, the day of the weigh-in, the day after the weigh-in. Right? I also like to see guys who are able to throw punches from the opening round to the last round. Right? I don't like guys who have the kind of low punch totals, and I mean low, that Chavez Jr. had for the first 11 rounds of his last fight against Sergio Martinez, right? That tells me that even for a big fight like that, where he was going up against the middleweight champion, Chavez Jr. just wasn't as prepared as he should have been. Let me just point out, I think most of the people watching this video know that Sergio Martinez is mobile. They know that it takes an effort to catch up with Martinez. Now if we, boxing fans, know that, why was it a surprise to Chavez Jr. on fight night? Let's talk about when that last fight took place. That was September of last year, folks. Chavez Jr. has not fought since. Think about it. So this is a shake off the rust fight. And of course, he's going to be shaking off the rust at a weight class in which he has never fought. Right? In my opinion, there are storm clouds on this one. It's even worse than that. Let's look at lifestyle right now Chavez Jr's legal team did a great job they got his fine for a positive marijuana test reduced to a hundred thousand dollars still a lot of money but think about it this marijuana test right came right around the time when Chavez was fighting the biggest fight of his career. Now you might say, okay, isolated incident, right? Chavez, by the way, didn't say that he had been at a rock concert or that he was a victim of secondhand smoke. No, he actually 
said, hey, I made mistakes. Well, I want you to think about the other mistakes this guy's made. Allegedly, he was busted for a DUI during a prior training camp. Let's go one step further. Earlier in his career, he was busted for a diuretic. In other words, this guy has had a problem making weight for years. Then, of course, there were those in the sport. What I'm about to say is just speculation, but understand it's out there. There are those in the sport, repeat players, guys like Marco Antonio Rubio and the late, great Emmanuel Stewart, who openly have questioned Chavez Jr.'s inability to give a post-fight drug sample, right, on multiple occasions. Opponents of Chavez Jr. have questioned why they've been unable to, in their opinion, obtain a post-fight drug sample in accordance with the proper protocol. Right? So, I would say storm clouds are all over the place. Let's get to perhaps the biggest storm cloud. It's July. In fact, I'm making this video on July 18th, 2013. This fight is scheduled for early September. Chavez Jr. apparently has not been at Freddie Roach's wild card gym. Right? You have a Hall of Fame trainer. You have a fight coming up. You've been out of the ring for a year. You've got to be kidding me. There's still uncertainty about Chavez Jr.'s trainer for this fight? Chavez Jr. hasn't even been with his superstar trainer in advance of this fight? And of course, the fight's at a different weight? Folks, they're problems. Okay, now I'll agree, Chavez Jr. hits hard and is the more talented fighter in this fight. But let's take a look at Brian Vera. Let me say this. Vera is the opposite of Chavez Jr. when it comes to fitness. Look at his last fight against Sergei Zinzurek. Zinzurek faded in that fight. It was the heaviest Zinzurek had weighed for several years. And of course, he had problems carrying the weight. Let me point out, too, that Brian Vera is a guy who, quite frankly, has had some stunning victories in his career. Right? He beat Andy Lee. He's the first guy to beat Andy Lee. He beat Sergio Mora. He retired Sergei Sinzurek. In other words, this is a guy who won't be in awe of the moment. He's had big fights. He's won big fights. He's also a faster starter than Chavez Jr. Right? Chavez Jr. was slow against Andy Lee in the beginning of that fight. He was slow against Marco Antonio Rubio in the beginning of that fight. He was slow against Sergio Martinez in the beginning of that fight. Against Brian Vera, he could well lose the first two rounds. Right? Let's also say this too. Brian Vera is a difficult matchup because he throws punches at wide angles. He's also the shorter man, but he's going to use that to his benefit because he's going to bend at the waist, right? And Vera is a guy who will come in. He likes to be on his front foot. He'll come in at angles. The interesting thing, though, is he's high volume, higher volume than Chavez Jr., those slow rounds. How do we know that a guy who's been out of the ring, who hasn't even been with his trainer, is going to have enough volume or land enough big punches to win the slow rounds against Brian Vera? Also, it's true that Vera got bullied and beaten up by James Kirkland in 2008. Vera got knocked out in that fight. And it's true. That, of course, Chavez Jr. 
like James Kirkland, can physically impose himself on an opponent. No question about it. But is it possible that Brian Vera has improved since then? That 2008 fight against James Kirkland is the last time that underdog Brian Vera has been KO'd. Let me also point out too that Brian Vera has fought big punchers. He actually had a rematch with Andy Lee. He lost the rematch. But understand Andy Lee's a big puncher. And Brian Vera went the distance against him. The bet I'm recommending and it's high risk. Right? Not really predicting an outcome here. I'm really just recommending a bet. As I like Chavez Jr. by KO. Hedged with the underdog. Brian Vera to win the fight. Right? I can see Brian Vera outboxing Chavez Jr. just like he outboxed Sergei Zurich before the end of that fight. And Zurich is a technician. And just like he outboxed, at least according to the judges, lower volume Sergio Mora. Right? I could see Brian Vera outboxing Chavez Jr. I could also see the wheels coming off the cart on Chavez Jr. Right? After all, he lost his last fight, folks. It's been more than a year since Chavez Jr. won a fight. Even the Sebastian Zvik fight. Look at the CompuBox numbers. Zvik landed far more punches than Chavez Jr., whose volume has been low in multiple fights. I could see Chavez Jr. feeling the eight extra pounds, feeling the fact that he hasn't been through a rigorous training camp with Freddie Roach, right? Feeling that he's been out of the ring for more than a year and also deluding himself in a believing especially after knocking down Sergio Martinez in the 12th round, that all he has to do is catch Brian Vera to win the fight, and that he doesn't have to train that hard. I could see Chavez Jr. getting derailed, just like Zinzurich was derailed in the latter part of this fight. Right, Guys who've been out of the ring for a while, who are there with new trainers, sometimes they run out of gas. Right? So I could even see the possibility of Brian Vera winning this fight by a late stoppage. So, I like the favored by KO, hedged with the underdog to win the fight. But understand the risk. Chavez Jr. has beaten better technicians in the past. Right? He beat Marco Antonio Rubio by decision. If it goes to a decision, and if Chavez Jr. wins that decision, you would lose it all. Let me hear from you. I like Chavez Jr. by KO hedged with underdog Brian Vera to win the fight. Let me know your thoughts. Thanks for stopping by.